I'm Rick Plum with this week's Lucia Capital Group weekly video. One of the big questions of estate planning often centers around whether a standard will can take care of your needs or is it better for you to have a living trust? How do you know which is right for you? There are some obvious differences between the two. With a standard will, all assets that go through the will are subject to a process known as probate. This is where the courts determine how your property will be distributed after you die. Probate is not fun. It's usually expensive, time consuming, and out in the public eye, so it's usually better to avoid it whenever you can. One fairly efficient way to avoid probate is to have a living trust, where assets like your bank accounts, your stocks, bonds, properties, and so forth, are transferred to a trust while you're still alive, hence the name living trust, and doing it this way generally allows your assets to be more quickly and easily distributed to your designated beneficiaries at your death by a representative that you choose. This person is called a successor trustee. A living trust avoids probate, along with the costs that go along with it. And unlike a will, which is public record, your assets are distributed to your beneficiaries privately. A living trust can also add language that gives you a level of control over the beneficiaries, which can be very important in some cases. It's important to note that even if you have a living trust, you still have a will. It's called a pour-over will, and it handles anything that doesn't have a beneficiary named or that's not actually titled into the name of a trust, and it handles things like naming the guardians. So the question really isn't whether you should have a will or a trust, but rather should you have a will by itself or a trust and a pour-over will combination? Now that's something you and your advisor should be thinking about. So what about life insurance and IRAs? Well, IRAs have beneficiary assignments on them, so they avoid probate by their very nature and don't need to be in the trust unless you want to put controls on how your beneficiaries get that money. I wouldn't normally recommend naming the trust as a beneficiary of an IRA but it's a, because it can create flexibility issues for the beneficiaries. But if retaining control over the assets is important to you, then this may be a good option. Now, as for life insurance policies, if you name the trust as a beneficiary, the proceeds at your death go into the trust without probate, and then the net assets of the trust pass to your trust heirs also without probate. But you should know that if you happen to die with a negative net worth and you owe more money than you have, the cash from that life insurance will first be used to pay off your debts. If you just name an heir as the direct beneficiary instead of the trust, then the life insurance is not responsible for paying the debts of the trust. Just something to keep in mind. Now, yes, there's a lot of information here, but like most everything else in retirement and estate planning, you've got options. Helping to educate you on the various options is just one of the things we do here every single day at Lucia Capital Group. Just give us a call. We're here to help.